hello and welcome back to another episode of the CrossFit Harrow podcast, episode number 69. Today we have Charles Bailey with us. Charles, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. First question that goes out all the time, why CrossFit Harrow? What brought you here? Why CrossFit Harrow? So um, I'd, I'd always been a little bit cynical, if I'm being completely honest, about CrossFit. Yeah. Um, I sort of associated it with, you know, what, what they do in the States and, and the kind of movement over there. But I had a, a mate of mine who's a director of sport at, a, at another school and he said you know this could be the thing for you just you know get into it um i think what frustrated me for a while is that i did some gym stuff played some rugby that kind of thing but um i kind of missed being surrounded by people in the class um and i was also looking for something at the time that started at 6am or around that time so i could do it before i went to work and this was actually the only thing so um looked you guys up i think you guys are the closest um yeah by far yeah yeah i'm making them as well but yeah um and came down for a class. Um, the first class was quite tough from, from memory. I think it was the CrossFit cardio class, one of those. Yeah, this would have been quite a, few, yeah, a couple yeah, of years ago. Quite yeah. intense. Um, and just, re- yeah, really enjoyed it um, and and stuck with it. It's definitely addictive. Yeah, um, people it, people do get the, the, the bug. They're generally, yeah. like, once they start, it's um, they get the bug. You uh, you said about the US. So had you tried CrossFit in the US? I'd, I'd never tried it. So that was completely my first time doing it. But whenever I'd done, I, th- I think I was kind of trying to follow some gym programs that were kind of based on supersets or based on like circuits. Yeah. Things where you move from one thing to the next. And obviously I knew about the CrossFit games and knew that there was a big movement in the States and, and my wife's American. So over there, it's a, a it's bit massive. bigger thing. Yeah. Massive. Um, so I, knew, even through- I knew of it. Sorry, go, sorry. Yeah, so I just kind of knew of it. It was in my psyche, but I never thought, I always thought, oh, it's not really for me. I'm just sticking stick yeah. to doing what I'm it, I think for, for a lot of people, it is that they see it and it's very hard taking that, that step because yeah. like the, the stuff that they maybe see is like, oh, I'm not sure if I, I can do that. But actually what happens inside is very, very different yeah. to, well, some there are some similarities, but you know, we won't, there's no pool here. So we're not going to ask you to do like muscle ups off a bar and then r- dry, dive into the pool yeah, and then yeah. get back out and stuff. Yeah. Um, so, Sporting wise, what you know, what's your but you said about the gym and stuff. What's your kind of background starting from that like, school with regards to sport? Um, I think I call myself a sort of yeah jack of all trades. I think I've <laughs> tried. I think one one. Yeah, well, I'm really grateful to my parents. They basically said do do everything. So I've done absolutely every sport you can you can imagine, and and um, I'm I'm pleased I, I did that because now you know I can pick up a golf club and play around or go and play squash or football or whatever. Um, but rugby was the kind of main sport that I, I stuck with um, and. So after leaving university, I carried on playing for three years when we lived in, in Islington in London um, and played in a league there. And that was every Saturday, um, which was good fun. Um, but I was coaching sport in the morning, Saturday mornings. It's quite a long day, and, right? It was quite a long day and getting in my car, coaching rugby or football and then straight to, to, to the match. Um, and um, so that wasn't very sustainable. And then moving jobs, I now work on Saturdays all day. So I couldn't do rugby anymore. So I was like, well, I've got to keep doing some sport, do some exercise. Um, so I started doing running, did a lot of running. Yeah, because um, yeah, over, especially is, over the lockdown period, did yeah, you start? I don't think I'm, I'm not built for running, I don't think, I don't, <laughs> definitely not. And it was, but, but I saw a lot of people who ran and I thought, like, I can see the appeal there. Like it's quite, it's, it's also quite an addictive sport in its own way. Yeah, um, people, people use it kind of like as their own time. They're kind of like, yeah. their mind tends to wonder. Like when you're, when you're in an environment like this, you, there's, there, is, there is focus, you have to concentrate with, with the task here. But I, same as you, I find running that people just, free their mind up. I think it does. And I, th- I think the, um, there's a, I always find like the first mile is miserable, whatever distance you're running, the first yeah, mile yeah. is miserable. And then like the, the second and third mile are okay. And then you get into a kind of rhythm and there's a kind of, I can't remember what they call it. There's, there's, a, there's a kind of running phrase for it, but you get into this kind of state where you do feel quite relaxed and you know, you, you, can, you can just keep going. Um, but the frustrating Wait, when, thing- When does that come? Because I still haven't got to that stage. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like you have to train so frequently with running to yeah. get to a stage where it doesn't hurt that much and where you can just do it. And then you can stop running for like a week or two and then you completely lose that and you've got to start again. Yeah. Um, and I never, there, there's no, there was no variety with running. I, I can completely like, I see the attraction for some people, but for me, I think I did it for like three or four years. Did it like, not seriously, but I, I did it quite regularly and, and did long distances and, um, but there's no variety. Yeah, I, I think for a lot of people, just with, like the experience that I've picked up that people think that like improving your running is just going for like a run but it's not there are like different speeds to, yeah. to look at your pace different intervals um, and that actually helps improve running short term or, or short distance or long distance it's not a case of like right I want to improve my 5k time yeah. I'm just going to go and run 5k all the time it's actually like building through different sp- like sprinting where people are like how does sprinting help 
may become a better long distance runner, but actually yeah, yeah. there is an element of sprinting that does help. Yeah, completely. And, and, and actually like when I look back on it, the sessions that I enjoyed the most were when I was doing like, they call it like fartlek. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like interval running. Um, yeah, different and terrains and I stuff. Really, yeah, really like that. But actually that's, that's more similar to CrossFit where you're doing kind of high intensity stuff and then lower intensity stuff. So um, what, what I do still run, but only when I go to a new city. It's like a way of seeing. Oh, right, okay. So if I go away for work or whatever, I'll go for just a jog around the city just to kind of see it. See it. And what, what, what's the biggest distance you've ran? Uh, I've never done a marathon, but I've done like 21 miles. There used to be like a- <laughs> You might as well have finished know, it off. Like, well, it was a charity run. There's like 21 miles. So it's from, from Harrow to central London and back. Wow. Um, just on, on what's called the Harrow Road. Um, and it was 21 miles. Um, but yeah, you get to the end and you're like, I might as well have just, I, I mean, I, from what I understand, the last last few miles are quite tough, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I might as well have done the last it, Is a marathon on the carts? Is no, that? Definitely not, no, no, no. no. I'm not, I've got, I've, I've got, I haven't really got much interest in going back to, to running. To running, um, yeah, it's very difficult. Yeah. Got to concentrate on the CrossFit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so with regards to, to rugby, you, you carried that on for three years and then is that something that you're still doing casually or just- I, I don't play at, at, at all, all anymore. Don't even, I used to play like some, some touch rugby and I, I played in- Was like it some, competitive rugby that you- Yeah, well, yeah, the level that I played at. Yeah, yeah so it's like, um, the, like the London League. So it's like London one, two and three. So I think that's tier seven or eight. So it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's competitive insofar as you're playing against people that want to beat you, but um, it's 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 not kind of high stakes, I suppose. Um, but it was re yeah, it was regular in you know 25 games a season kind of thing. Um, and that's that quite level, a big commitment. To, yeah. it's, it's a big commitment and, and quite a lot of training. And at that level, you tend to get quite quite big guys um, playing who aren't perhaps past their best, but they you know if, if they fall on you at the bottom of a it's going to hurt. Know about it. Yeah. Um, and I was always one of the smaller players, so. Um, I do actually, I, I'm, what I do miss the most about rugby is the kind of Sunday morning, get out of bed, feeling like you've been in a bit of a, yeah. a battle, yeah. um, which you actually you do, do sometimes get with CrossFit, but not, <laughs> yeah. not in the same way. Um, and I think, that, I think some of the skills... They translate a lot. They, yeah. they do, yeah, they do. Um, but some of the body positions and the mobility stuff has been quite limiting for CrossFit. And that's been, especially in like the first few months of doing it, I really had to focus on like my knees, like my shoulder, overhead mobility and stuff like that. Yeah. Because rugby just doesn't prepare you for that. There's a there's a t-shirt that you wear, long ducker. Yeah, long ducker. Yeah, what's yeah. that? What's that about? Yeah, Is that, that rugby yeah. based? Uh, no, that's that's actually that 21 mile run. Oh right. Yeah. yeah. So the it was a it was a run set up in the 80s um, to raise money for different charities in the local area, um, and uh, and yeah, so a, a group of a group of schoolboys and, and and teachers from from Harrow would we'd run down to, to central London, touch Marble Arch, and then yeah. run run back. It's quite a steep hill on the way back, but that was that's the yeah, that was the 21 miles. Oh, right, okay, it's yeah. It's not no, 21 miles anymore. I think I've always seen that t-shirt, but I don't think I've ever asked you about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, there's uh, a swimming version now as well, which is 400 lengths. Of, um, of, of outdoor of, or? Of a 25 meter pool, so wow. it's quite a distance. Yeah, that um, is. And you've got to do the distance under three hours to to be given the Long Ducker Award. Um, so lots of the- lots Is of it boys. named after someone or? So, so Ducker was, a, um, was the largest outdoor swimming pool in the, in the UK up until it, when it closed. And actually it was based, well, it's still, it's still there, but it's all filled in. It's next to Northwick Park Hospital. Um, I didn't even and, know that. Yeah, so you can actually go there. You can see the outline of the pool. There's some quite cool pictures online, but it was this massive outdoor pool. I guess it would have been, it was open until the 1970s-ish but it was open, I think, at the turn of the 20th century. Um, and those people come from, from all around and, and oh, the wow. school owned it and it's now an indoor pool. But um, yeah, so that's where the name comes from, Long Ducker. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Um, so and you've recently become a father to a second child, mm. right? Mm. Baby boy. Yeah, girl. Girl. Yeah, yeah. girl, the first one's boy. First one's boy, that's right, yeah. How, yeah. Um, obviously, congratulations. Thank you, um, yeah. How has fatherhood been with, obviously, the last like 18 months has been quite, quite, hard on people in yeah. general a newborn as well was it difficult yeah. i mean we've been quite we've been quite fortunate in so far as um having the the lockdown last last summer finn our our, our eldest he's, he's two now he was he was only a, a year or just less than a year old so we had that whole lockdown period with him which was great and otherwise we wouldn't have spent that much time with him i think and the nurseries were closed as well and cecilia who's our who's our six month old um, again, we, we had you know that kind of January, February, March period with her um, at home. So it's been we've been quite fortunate, but you know it, it's quite stressful when you do yeah. your own space. Um, and um, I think I was, I was speaking to, to one of the other members actually on Saturday, and they were saying like 
I started CrossFit, I think two weeks after our first one was born, almost because he was born. And they were like, that's quite a strange way to do it. But actually finding a space that's just your own time where there's no, nothing. You don't no, need to worry yeah, about anything. Yeah. Actually, just concentrate on that. Um, it's, it's good. Yeah, as an outlet. Yeah, because um, it, it must be quite tough. I mean, you know, being, I, I guess, when you do have a child, that there's th like you put. It's not as easy as like, right? I'm going to go, going to go and do this. Like training is not as important. Like priorities obviously very much change. Yeah. Um, ha have you adjusted? How did you find that adjustment with child one and child two? Like yeah. the same or okay? Two, two is more than double. I think someone told me that. Yeah. In a second, and it's because when there's one, there's there's in most cases there's you know there's two of you to look after that baby. You can kind of split it. Um, but with with two kids, you know either you're on your own with the two kids, and that's you know that's a com complete nightmare. Um, good fun at times, but <laughs> a bit of a nightmare. Uh, or there's two of you there, and you kind of divide and conquer. Um, but it's, it's 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 been okay. Um, I think you've got to with like the training, you've got to have a a partner that's interested in training him or herself or someone that's very understanding um other than my wife is understanding but, <laughs> but we used to yeah as i was saying we used to do 6 a.m classes and as soon as we had the second she's like i need your need your help to yeah get ready in the yeah. morning so now i try and do the 7 30 because classes. it's a massive obviously it's a massive compromise in that sense but it's hard for for people i can imagine it being quite hard that you're giving up a lot you know obviously you're gaining so much but people are so used to having their own time and stuff and then obviously yeah. they're having to share that now but I think it's one of those things like in, when, when we didn't have kids, I didn't, I didn't think, oh, you know, what am I doing with my time? I thought I was using my time effectively. Mm. But now that we've had kids, made you reassess. Kind of think like, what did I, what was I doing with my time? Because yeah. Now I've got a free hour, free couple of hours. I'll use them, I'll try and use them really effectively and mm. efficiently. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then talk to me about, because um, you've written down or when we spoke about minimal, minimalism. <laughs> yeah. Talk to me more or, or tell everyone what exactly that is. Um, this is a. This could be like a. I, I don't. Think, I don't think I'm young enough to say a cause life crisis, but not quite a midlife crisis. But um, during the lockdown, I got. I got massively into the idea of like just trying to reduce the number of things I have and and just use things. Don't focus on objects. That kind of thing. Read around that area quite a lot, and uh, basically the result of that is that our, our house is very empty now. Um, but I quite like it. Like mentally, it's been quite good as well. So um, there, I guess there's. There's essentialism, which is, you know, you, you, you make the most out of the, the things you have and you don't buy things just because you want to buy them. Um, I suppose the opposite of con consumerism, although we have just talked about me going to Westfield. With <laughs> um, and, then, and then you've got minimalism, which is, is, yeah, just trying to basically reduce clutter is, is the, the easiest way of saying it. But there, are, there is a kind of philosophy behind it and, and the idea that it does kind of clear your mind. And, and some people do take it to the sort of nth degree. Um, and there have been some movements of minimalism, particularly in like Japan and other parts of the world, where you know that, that you wouldn't even have a bed frame; you just have a mattress. That's obviously like like too far. That is quite um, extreme, and that's not in my. But yeah. but yeah, but but actually, I mean, the, the gym itself is quite like it's quite a minimalist yeah. space because yeah. you know if you went into a normal gym, you'd have machines everywhere, and you have loads of you know machines or whatever else. But um, so yeah, it was it was it was, it was something that yeah got into quite a lot during during lockdown. But I think everyone got into something, didn't they? Like you yeah. were baking and <laughs> yeah, I, I'd yeah. agree. And I think like, with, with that though, I think we live in a world of like not understand. Well, majority of us do, but there's also a lot of us that don't about the difference of like wanting and needing things. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things that we do want and we end up buying, but actually we don't don't need them. I was listening to something earlier today, actually. I, I think it was another podcast, and I, I think it was one of the CrossFit athletes actually uh, saying that it was actually Fraser that was explaining that. Um, with the new iPhone, for example, um, your your day to day life is absolutely fine with your, the current phone that you've got. Yeah. But now that a new one has come out, it's led you to believe that you need a new one. But actually, you were completely fine before yeah, that, yeah. and actually don't need it. It's something that you want. Um, and then we just we keep following that. We keep following that process of like we've got something, but actually we want to improve it. But un yeah. un until it becomes an essential thing as part of like, do I need it? because it needs to you know help me with this or blah 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 then fine but if you don't then there's yeah. no need for it yeah and there is i mean it's it's that kind of you get that i guess that dopamine rush for yeah like short term like, time. Yeah. so like you get the new iphone um and yeah it's great for a couple of weeks and then it's just an iPhone, become right? yeah 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 um and it, and you get that feeling that you, you had when you just had your phone before like yeah, you just yeah exactly um and of course you know these, these companies are kind of you know they're building in these features and, and making it sound as if you need these features but actually if you look at like 
upgrades. The, the, the change is quite minimal yeah, at the yeah. time now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and there's, I guess, linked to the kind of minimalism thing is about being intentional with purchases or things that you do. So, um, you know, if you are going to make a purchase, making sure that you're doing it in, in a way that, you know, is going to guarantee longevity. So I, I guess some, the way that some people do it is they might try and avoid fast fashion or they try and avoid, um, you know, buying flat pack furniture or, or things that won't necessarily last the test of time. Um, but I, I've always thought with that, you've got to be in quite a you know, quite fortunate position to, to make those decisions. Mm. Actually, the beauty of fast fashion and, and flat pack furniture is that it's accessible. It's not too expensive. You can put it up quickly, whatever else. So, yeah. And if it does break, it dismantles. It's exactly. not the, you're like, it's fine. Yeah. It's replaceable. Yeah. Um, um, I, I actually have, I mean, there's a bold bit of a bold statement. It's probably going to people going to laugh at, at this. Um, I used to buy clothes quite a lot. Okay. Um, and I've tried to stop just gym clothes or just like just any just gym clothes, just, yeah. casual clothes and i've actually tried to stop that because it's going back to that need need and want and actually yeah. like if you look back at maybe the last like six months of what you've worn it's pretty much the same same thing yeah. and they say that um whether it be the claim of successful or whatever just in just people who are in good habits tend to have like the same t-shirt but maybe in different colors yeah, or yeah, like yeah. four of the same. So yeah. the choices that they wake up in the morning are very limited. It's like, right, well, I've got a black t-shirt, black pair of jeans, That's it. as easy yeah, as that. Yeah. Um, and if you haven't got that choice to make in the morning, then you, your mind is free to do bit, other things. Yeah, so, I mean, that that would yeah. be, yeah. Yeah, that's the kind of, uh, I think the philosophy yeah. behind it. Um, so when you say that your house is empty, uh, yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you've obviously decluttered from that's from right, yeah. from quite a bit. You yeah. Just did it, what did you do? Did you th decide to throw things away, give it charity. We gave a lot away to charity. Obviously, giving stuff away during during a lockdown was quite hard to do. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, every, I think everyone was doing it, and I think I've I've got um, I've got quite an obsessive personality. So if I discover something I'm interested in, I'll try and like read everything I can about it. Um, so a lot of books. <laughs> so, yeah, a few books and uh, and yeah, podcasts, whatever, whatever else, and and. Um, so yeah, gave gave stuff away, and there's a bit of a tension with giving stuff away because you're just passing your clutter on to someone else. Um, but one man's junk yeah, is another yeah, man's yeah, well, exactly. treasure. Yeah. yeah, and if you if you no longer, um, it's it, I don't, don't know if you came across like Marie Kondo a couple of years ago. She's quite popular. So her big thing is if something doesn't bring you joy anymore, you know, you thank it for for, for the, what it's done for you, and you just pass it on to someone else. Um, and she she particularly talks about. Clothes and, and there's a group, there's a there's two guys called the minimalists and they say that you should use things and love people which I think is quite a nice quite, quite a nice turn of phrase because often as opposed to yeah, loving, loving things, things and using you, people, yeah. um, or just being too obsessed with with things um, so yeah we gave quite a lot of stuff away we did we did throw away some stuff but um, with, with the throwing away process what you do realize is that it's quite hard to throw things away in a like responsible way so there are clothes banks and and like British Heart Foundation who'll pick stuff up around around Harrow but but you end up just having kind of a pile of things that you, you then what, what would you have got rid of like would it be a case of like you know books like you had loads of books on the bookshelf yeah, like get rid of, of yeah just chain replace those with a plant or something yeah um, exactly or not yeah. even um yeah so like I mainly just read everything off a of Kindle now um just like put, put because again for, for me like like the like a space um that's cluttered does make me feel quite cluttered myself yeah quite, yeah quite stressed out and, you would hate um, to see my laptop because i've got about 150 tabs open do you? Top. yeah I've i got, always got... assume you'd be the other way because you're, you're always like you know, no I, well, it's, and... it's because i use them so often that i don't like okay. closing them it's just like open it yeah, I, yeah. I, I generally i actually have a, about 20 tabs open i got because i've always assumed that you're you've got that kind of that streak <laughs> in you as well because i remember with, that, the, with the wall marks yeah. it was like oh there's marks really annoying they, they, like, things <laughs> do bother me like that but i think um I've ch I just chose access over it because because the information was the, the, on the pages. There'd always be things that I need, and I yeah. need to just restart from that point. So rather than having to shut it down, and but I I, I did actually funny that you say this because I contemplated the other night of getting rid of all the tabs. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Um, and just that feeling of being like, oh, it's empty. Like, but I haven't got around to doing. Because it people yet. do it with apps as well. So yeah. you Look at some people's phones, and they've got like basically every app under the sun. You yeah. Know, how often are you using, you know, th this app? Um, it's just on your phone, just like taking up like your your mental space, but also space on the phone. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, digital minimalism. That's an, that's another wormhole. So we, we won't get. Well, they out. after quite after a little bit of time, if you don't use an app, it it just goes to yeah, the cloud. Say, it just, yeah, that's yeah, right, yeah, it just yeah. takes the data off. Yeah. Um, so we, you spoke here about like your physical and mental health. Is is it something that you're into 
in you or is it like you're starting to study the mental health of others or just I think a bit of both I think it's um whenever I feel I felt like most stressed or like having kids you know new jobs stuff going on I I actually tend to train more or I try and make myself train more and and you know if you kind of I don't I don't really track my moods on on a daily basis or anything like that but if I, if I were to do that, I think I'd probably see a correlation between when I wasn't doing exercise and when I wasn't feeling as, as great as I could do. Um, and, you know, there's obviously, there, there's physiological reasons for that. Um, but also, going back to what we were saying earlier, being able to just concentrate on something in your own time and enjoy something for its own sake yeah. is good. Um, but I, I'm quite passionate about the benefits of sport for, for young people as well. So, um, and I think that's because, you know, with, with my teaching, I've always coached sport and I've I've seen boys and girls who, who might have struggled in the classroom, but they really thrive on the, on the sports field. And unless you're a teacher who's seen them on the sports field, you might just think, oh, they're, they're academically quite weak, but actually they could be hugely talented in another yeah. area. Yeah. Um, and that, that, that doesn't always get seen. Yeah, that, that's one of the biggest things, I think, like, especially in, in schools in England, I think like the sports is quite limited, yeah. depending on the school, obviously. The sports is quite limited. Like I remember being at school that it would just be, it was either, it was football or rugby. Yeah. And pretty much that was it. Um, but I, I think now over the last couple of years, they've started to bring in a lot more sports yeah. because of that reason that someone might not be a great, great at football and might be weak academically, but actually they might be great at tennis. Yeah, yeah. Um, because the States have that. They've got quite a good... Oh, sport. It's, I mean, the, yeah, the, the provision for, for sport in the United States, like... Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, yeah, it's another level. Yeah, they're, they're like weightlifting in the oh, morning. Yeah, they're yeah. swimming in the morning. Yeah, but, but there is some, there's some research in there that like some of the weightlifting that maybe, I don't know whether they do it exclusively in the States, but if they start weightlifting at like 14, 15, then that could be, that could be counterproductive. Yeah, yeah, um, but there, I've, I have read that too. But the, in terms of facilities, I mean, it's just, you know, the United States have just pushed so much money towards towards sport even in in your kind of local high school you'd have like a you know a massive gym and but yeah they they like it's pretty much standard isn't it it's yeah, like yeah. Bog, bog standard like you, you would have a pretty good sports facility whether it be access to pool gym yeah, yeah. they'd have judo karate yeah, kind of yeah. stuff but am i right in saying that in order for you to be in the sports teams in the states you yeah. have to achieve something academic you have to x y and z yeah so, so you've got to have like a certain gpa so you yeah grade point average that allows you to to play for the sport so they see you know they, they look at academic excellence as well as sporting excellence and then you know I, I suppose the reason they do that is is when those the, the top you know one percent of kids who go on to college to play college sport they have to do the same so they've still got to back it up with the yeah. academics because you you might find that someone's actually really really good at sport but very or struggles yeah. academically I guess it just gets them to pick up their standard uh, yeah I and think study so. a lot more i think so um and, and obviously you being a teacher what what made you get into teaching what what why did you choose that so it was always um it was from about 14 15 i wanted to teach i remember getting quite a lot of stick from my mates at the time because like, yeah it's quite it's early not cool to want to teach <laughs> when you're 14 15 might not be cool to teach <laughs> so I don't know. um but uh so so i was always keen to do that and then went off to university uh enjoyed university i, I think what did you study at uni i, I studied theology yeah, I don't. Well, I yeah, can't even say what it is. Yeah, so like the, like the study of religion. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's like religious studies, I suppose. Fine. Uh, with some philosophy and history in there as well. Um, what made you choose that? So I couldn't decide whether I want to study history or English at university, and then I was kind of talking to one of my teachers about it, and they were like, "Well, you know, have you thought about applying for theology? You know, this course, you know, is is uh, is a kind of a combination of the two. So, you know, I, I study like the Crusades, medieval history." Um, there's obviously a lot of like biblical scripture um i'm from a i'm from quite a like traditional catholic background but i'm kind of religiously quite ambivalent myself so i was i was kind of like well you know i don't know if that's for me i don't want to be the only person that's not yeah uh, religious but actually you know going going up to university um i wasn't i wasn't in the minority there's quite a few people studying theology or philosophy who um who, who aren't religious but just aren't quite interested in it um so did that for did that for three years but, and and lots of the people around me were you know, keen to go into the city, you know, law, investment banking, management consultancy, that kind of thing. And um, that didn't appeal to you? Well, so it, I kind of got caught up in that a little bit. So, so I started doing like intern, law internships and, and I was quite interested in the law and, and I, was, I was really close to doing it. And then like the last, like, at the, you know, the 11th hour, 
I, I knew I always wanted to teach, so I said to myself, well, I, you know, I'm going to really regret not teaching. So I'm just going to do a couple of years teaching, and then if I want to go back to the law, then I can do. So I stayed on at university for another year to do teacher training, and then just stuck with, stuck. with teaching. And I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't move from that now. Yeah, I was just about, that yeah. was going to be my next question. Yeah. I mean, there's some, sometimes you kind of like, you think, well, actually, you know, it would have been quite nice to work in the city to have experienced that. Um, and I think it does, it does definitely suit a certain person, but um, especially with kids now, and having school holidays, you know, having having reasonable working hours, um, you know, being able to use my evenings to do stuff like this, like that's that suits me at the moment. Quality yeah. life's important, I think. Yeah. D how, how did you find obviously teaching? Because we have had a couple of teachers in the past on yeah. here, and it's interesting to see everyone's different views and how they dealt with the hot COVID situation, like teaching. How, how was that for you as a teacher? Yeah. Uh, so we we decided as a school that we were going to teach every every lesson just online. Uh, through, through Microsoft Teams, and um, which which was fine um, and and worked well. You know, our kids were they were they were well engaged at the start, definitely, and they, and most of them stayed well engaged. But it was it's hard for anyone to look at a screen for you know however many hours a day. Uh, Lindsay, my wife, they, she's a head of sixth form at a girls' school in Northwood, and she um, she was doing the same thing. So their school decided to do the same thing. So we were in a kind of interesting situation where if we were both teaching online at the same time and we had we just had the one year old at the time, one of us would have to teach with the kid on, on camera. Um, he couldn't really look after himself. Um, <laughs> there were a couple of amusing instances where we were like just passing him biscuits under the table, just trying to keep him quiet whilst you teach the lesson. Um, I remember at the time thinking, oh, it might be really unprofessional to have a kid like doing the lesson and the kids are trying to concentrate. Um, but actually like in retrospect, I think it was really good for like the students at home to see you know, we're just like normal people, like normal yeah, people get doing shown our best a bit of lockdown and, yeah. and everyone struggling. So it was, it was, it was tough. Um, it was um, actually the the like the CrossFit stuff made quite a big difference. So I, I decided at the start of um, that first lockdown, whenever it was in, in March, um, April, that I needed to have some kind of like routine in place. Um, so I think it was six six p.m. every night. Um, Coach Case, um, <laughs> yeah. the, and you had the unfortunate twenty-eight kilo ke or twenty-four kilo. Yeah, kettle. I, I, yeah I didn't think that through, but I think that was my own fault. Like, <laughs> yeah, you invite us in. It's like, what, what, uh, what bit of equipment to get? I was like, oh, I'll get the really heavy kettlebell and then like a twenty kilo dumbbell, and that was that was all I had. Yeah, yeah, um, you, I remember on some one of the zooms, it was, and, but it was it was cool because every, like literally every night that was you know that was that was the thing to do, and and I know everyone was like everyone was working out in that first lockdown. I think lots of people were doing it. Um, but it, it was really good to, to have that because you felt connected to other people through Zoom. But you know, it's also you're out of the house for for at least an hour a day. Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously, you're back teaching. Well, not so much on, on holidays now, but back teaching in person. Yeah. Have you seen a, Have you seen an effect on the kids that you're teaching? Yeah. So, so, so I think some kids really benefited from the lockdown. Like learning online for some kids worked really was well. Actually, quite good. Yeah. And I think that not enough has been made of, made of that. There, there have been a few articles written on it, but. Uh, a lot has been made of like lost learning and there definitely has been there's been a lot of lost learning nationally so there are some kids that really had bad lockdowns and schools that maybe couldn't um, you know couldn't put on the same kind of kind of lessons or, or whatever it may be um, and there are some kids that just don't learn well online I don't, I don't personally I don't think I would have benefited from doing stuff online the whole time um, but there have been some kids that have done well and it's been interesting to see yeah the kids coming back and some kids that you thought understood things well online, perhaps you know need to do a bit of catching up now, and, and others who were really quiet online actually took lots in and, and it suited them. Yeah, um, I was I was thinking that that when having the kids come back in, see you know if there was a difference to those who you thought actually took absorb stuff, and then actually when they come back in person, can they translate that back into what they're supposed to be doing, or they yeah. found it tough to do that we, we made quite a big choice so the second lockdown um yeah, at the beginning of this year we decided to say to the kids all of you have to keep your cameras on and, and microphones on during the lesson because the first time around we thought we'll leave it down to them we don't want to be too intrusive they might want to turn their cameras off yeah because also it's like not just for the students but for you it's your home in the background yeah, exactly. you know yeah and i think that's a massive thing with a lot of teachers um friends of mine as well that 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 teach that you know even like having to call off your mobile phone and stuff they like yeah. a lot of them weren't comfortable with doing that and i don't blame them it was yeah it, it wasn't it wasn't ideal at all but but actually i think by the time we went to the second lockdown in, in january we like everyone was kind of used to it we knew we knew the game and and you know all of our boys they were happy to have their cameras on and actually you saw more you know when you've got your camera on you've got you've got to contribute a bit more you can't kind of kind of hide and actually from a teaching perspective you felt like what you were doing was was 
was more valuable because when you're just speaking to a kind of blank screen, you didn't. Yeah. Know, you, know, like, you don't know there. if anyone's yeah. watching. Yeah. yeah. Did you find it harder um, in terms of like planning lessons and having to engage the students through that? Because I would imagine, yeah. obviously, teaching maybe to a, a blank screen or through your laptop. I mean, yeah. I never done it um, in a teach from a teaching perspective, but it it was quite tough. Being... I think one of the best things for the the whole sector is that everyone, but like all teachers have had, have had to upskill with their IT skills. So if you you know even if you struggled in the in the first lockdown with your IT, but like you know most teachers nationally now will be quite good with IT which could only be good when yeah, you yeah. go back into the classroom yeah um, and we had we were fortunate enough to have sort of integrated like one note into everything that we do in about 2017 2018 so we kind of moved away from a situation where our boys have um, have physical files and, 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 and notes and, and they do everything through one note so actually having that in place before the lockdown was, was really uh, actually helped yeah so well just yeah through that um, do, have you now that you're back have you found that or, or even during did you find that kids were coming to you saying like i'm i'm struggling i I'm, i can't complete the work or it's yeah. too difficult i'm missing the one to one interaction i think we had a yeah i think we had a few um i think most of them were just pleased to be back with their with their mates and doing you know the, the kind of things that they were hoping to do um at the start of last year and and we've talked a lot about like the the institutional memory of a place so like you know it's it's going to be what 18 months 18 months plus uh, in any kind of community whether it's like a gym or, or school if people aren't there people forget what it was like and what the community was like before the lockdown so we've, we've tried really hard to do to do a lot of the things that we weren't able to do when the kids were around i think most of them are just really really yeah. thankful for that so and actually sports been a big thing so cricket you know cricket's been one of those sports that you could play in a kind of socially distanced manner um, and we've been encouraging so many boys to just play because they missed out on last yeah. summer. Has there been things that you've continued to do? So like, for example, for us, we, one of the big things, obviously we went on Zoom, but we, ha we haven't necessarily continued through Zoom, although we've got the app that mm. is online, but um, have, you in uh, have you integrated something from the lockdown or have you kind of gone back to where you were before? Yeah, it's a good, good question. I think we do, um, I probably do more of what's known as like flip learning. So where you give, uh, you give the kids loads of sort of reading or, or work to do before the lesson. So, you know, whereas before in a kind of traditional teaching setup, you'd, you'd introduce new material to the kids and then you, you, you take them through it. During the lockdown, I'd give them the information before the lesson and then we use the lesson to kind of unpick areas that they didn't understand. Okay. And that actually was quite good because, you know, the, the kids quickly realized that if they didn't do the preparation work, they wouldn't get much out of the lesson. So I've carried on doing that. We still have, we did up until quite recently have lots of, a few international boys who were, because it was boarding school, who were still not at the school. Um, so we had to do like kind of hybrid, hybrid sessions or hybrid lessons. So um, where you still got the screen and we were still talking to boys on the screen and boys in the classroom. Oh, and right. That, that was a bit of a, bit of a That must a be challenge. quite tough. Yeah. Um, but it was actually really good. And, and, you know, hats off to the guys who are at home still, you know, knowing that their mates are, you know, back at the school and, and, and engaging. And also, you know, the boys in the classroom are really good at engaging with the guys who are, who are yeah. on the screen. Because I would imagine that being quite challenging, even from a teacher perspective, because you're doing it in person, having that, there could be a connection issue or, yeah. and then it's like delays a lesson and like kids are waiting, you know. Yeah, um, yeah it's it a hard one to, to balance. And I, I mean, like the kind of IT infrastructures, like not just in schools, but yeah, everywhere, everywhere. become so important, aren't they? And, and yeah. Um, I, I feel quite quite sorry for like IT teams across the different businesses. Yeah, but they top, they would have been inundated with, with work over oh, that yeah. period of time. Massively, yeah. we, we like we we increased our like the whole broadband setup and stuff yeah. because we were doing so much on I need like the film and stuff and then having to upload like it just every from everything. From yeah, the, had yeah. to pick it up. Um, I actually forgot to ask about when we're talking about minimalism about habits. You, you've, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, so when we say habits, is in positive good habits or things like daily. Yeah, so it's it's something I guess it's kind it's kind of linked to minimalism, productivity, that kind of stuff. It's um, I was kind of like again, it was during lockdown. Again, maybe a kind of quarter life crisis. Um, there 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 are certain certain habits that that you want to you know make sure that you're you're sticking with, and there are things you don't want to do. Um, and I I was always quite good at like managing those myself, but I actually try to be a bit more active into like tracking them, trying to work out when I was you know doing things when I wasn't. So. Yeah, you know, I, I still do it now. Like track how many times I might go to CrossFit and have like certain aims for for any given month, um, and cross referencing that that against other things that I'm doing, and and just kind of seeing where the points of tension are. Um, 
same with like I guess to a certain extent like nutrition or or like drinking alcohol so like I, there's there's definitely a correlation for me between like drinking alcohol in a week and not training as much or as well yeah and uh, playing rugby notoriously is rugby's notoriously known for the yeah. amount of alcohol oh completely yeah 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 and um and, and and some of that's quite positive you know the sense of like camaraderie and stuff um I think in, in rugby and sport is good but um I think yeah I, I think it's quite good to recognize where one's vices like lie and I, yeah. and I say I've got like I do think I've got a bit of a um, addictive personality and that can be quite good if you channel it in certain directions um, but it's just like making sure you keep an eye on that um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah something I've been, been so distinguishing like good habits carrying those on see the correlation yeah, yeah. eliminate things that may be negative um, yeah. if you see them along the way yeah and, and making making bad habits making them into a, a good habit so instead of being like oh, I'm not gonna I don't eat fast food Although I said I had, five, <laughs> we five, won't talk five, about five that. For lunch. We'll, yeah, we'll cut that out. Um, um, yeah, I'm not going to have fast food. It'll be like eating healthy, or I'm not going to drink alcohol for a week. It'll be like, well, I'm, I'm only going to drink water, or, or trying to trying to make it into into a, a positive. Um, again, it's quite it's it's an area that's been written about quite a lot in the last couple of years, and I think people have got really interested in it during lockdown. Um, although I think there was some research at the start of this week that was looking at like alcohol consumption and the amount of weight that people have put on during I think the average lockdown. was was it half a stone Something was like it that. half a stone yeah. that people put on over lockdown and I don't know why that necessarily is because you did like you saw all the stuff particularly last summer where people were I think people had a time the chance to actually reflect and they they weren't being tempted by you know after work drinks and and parties and that kind of thing uh, yeah I mean it's 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 pretty hard one to call because although maybe people found a new love for exercise let's say but I think the access to being at home and having food constantly. Yeah. Um, like the activity, I, I do think, although there was a newfound love for activity, I also think the inactivity levels also increased yeah. because it would have been very, if someone, you know, was was furloughed and, at, you know, their whole day was, well, what do I do? Like, you, even if you worked out for like half an hour for your day or yeah. hour for your day, where you'd usually be moving to the train, you'd be walking from your desk to somewhere or whatever it is that you do, there was none of that. It was yeah. like, I'll watch TV. I think it's that, you, you know, the 10,000 steps thing again. It's quite, it gave a good goal for people. Yeah, it's a good goal for you. And I think like normally, you know, in a normal day, you might you might do that quite easily. Um, but I think during lockdown, yeah, you might do your hours workout, but you're not you're not walking to the car, yeah. you're not commuting, you're not whatever. Yeah, but I mean, half a stone's quite a lot um, yeah. on average. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do, did, did they say alcohol consumption was up? I alcohol it, consumption during lockdown. Yeah, so, yeah must it have been. up a lot. Um, and I think again, it, it, some of it goes back to that kind of that essentialism idea I was talking about earlier. Like, there's, there's definitely nothing wrong with enjoying a you know glass half bottle of wine. Yeah, like, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. But it's it's um, like I don't know, just 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 enjoying it for its own sake instead of just thinking, oh, I'll just have one more glass, one more glass. And that's definitely for me. That's that actually CrossFit's helped with that because you know, if, let's say on a Friday night, if, if I'm out or wife and I are having a bottle of wine, I might think, well, actually, I fancy another glass, but do I really want it? What's that? How's that going to affect the the eight a.m. Yeah, class yeah. tomorrow? Well, yeah. we we noticed that the, the weekend obviously well, yeah, with yeah. barbecue. The I Sunday say we always get it right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The Sunday post barbecue was very very quiet yeah. because obviously the the extra drink or two or three. Um, and like, then the weekends, I think. Are, so you like you can be really good. Now I'm massively guilty of this. You can be really good all week. You now you can come to CrossFit like I don't know four or five times a week, three three four times a week. Eat well, and then you like right Friday night, right? You know. Get, get a big bowl pasta on and yeah, yeah. You know, a couple of glasses of wine and then you know you might go out with friends on a Saturday night and then suddenly you know any good work is kind of undone yeah but I guess it's it, it, those those that do work Monday to Friday I think it's a very easy trap to fall into because I do think on a front the fitness industry pushes people that way because yeah. it helps them it helps the industry like do other things sell this and do that etc um, and I've always said to people, I think it's very important that people choose one of the days of the weekends to train because then it starts to incorporate those good habits that yeah. you're talking about. So if you set your, I don't know, if you set your Sunday up that, you know, you, you, that you're out training um, in the morning, then you're more likely to stick to, not necessarily a plan, I'm not asking people to stick to a plan, but you're more likely to stick to your good habits that you do Monday to Friday. Yeah. Um, as Because it's, it's people's downtime, that's why. It's perceived in your head, everyone's head is like, as soon as that, clock hits five o'clock on that Friday it's like yeah. right it's my free time yeah, I can yeah, do yeah, what yeah, I want yeah, yeah. Um, and then you're right people end up undoing the good stuff yeah. in the space of like 48 hours oh completely yeah 
um, it's for, that balance. for me, a big, um, a big thing's been like I drink a lot of non-alcoholic beer. Okay. So I don't know what it, I don't know if it's kind of a placebo thing or like you know on a again get a bit of stick for my mates this, but um, you know on a fr- you know, Friday night like having a couple of non-alcoholic beers like actually that's that's fine. If I had a couple of beers, that also would have been fine. But but then I might you know on Saturday morning I might you, not train yeah. as well or I'd be a bit you know slow out the blocks first thing. So I guess you can't win either way really because if you do have the beers you feel shit on the Saturday. Yeah. And if you don't, you get stick. That's it. That's <laughs> you get it. stick yeah, from yeah, them. Yeah. But so, does I mean some of the non-alcoholic drinks? There's um, how do you f- like how do you feel completely normal? Like the sh- is the sugar intake of those high? I don't, Obviously, I know that you're yeah. not going to be drunk off them. The non-alcoholic ones. People are probably laughing at me on the screen. Um, <laughs> well, I thought that's, uh, most of them are like 0.5 percent. You okay. can't. You you'd have to. You'd, you'd have, have to drink to, about a good. Quickly, <laughs> yeah. I think, to, to have an effect, but um, they're. Um, I think so. I know it's like brew dog. Um, they, they do some, don't they? They do what they, yeah, they do a few, and, and their their biggest selling beer is their like punk IPA. Their second biggest selling beer worldwide is their like, alcohol free oh, right. uh, nanny state. It's called. Okay. Do quite a lot of that, um, and it's um, yeah. It, I, I, don't, I don't know. There might be other side of it. I mean, it's does like, it leave you bloated the next day? Like, it's, not really. It's like beer tw- can 20, leave you twenty five calories. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, check it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not a massive massive drinker, but I, I don't think I've ever tried one. It's a big um, yeah, and you can set and you can see all these other companies. You know, your Heineken's. Uh, you know other companies that are going down that 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 direction well i i think i guess it's a it's in itself it's a completely new market and quite a big market yeah are you into your beers and ipas and yeah i I think yeah i mean as as much as the next person i'm like i don't i don't think i'm particularly um like well versed in what makes a good beer but like yeah i prefer like a craft beer to like a just just a pint i think we never we we I usually ask and we, we haven't touched on but the nutrition side of things obviously like playing rugby um doing this quite regularly how you know what's your do you are you someone that like is really let's say restrictive how do you how's your what's your day-to-day food like <laughs> um, you just eat when and as and yeah when? i don't i i don't yeah i don't like track macros anything like that i just to eat when i'm hungry but yeah I don't, but i think um i've definitely got a body type where like I don't, I don't think I've got fast metabolism. I think I've got slow metabolism. So I'm like, I can't. Um, like I can't. We're quite indulge. similar. Charles, I, think we're quite, I think we're quite similar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, uh, and, and there's definitely been times when I think, you know, when I think back to, actually, like when when we got married, I sometimes look back at photos of us and like, obviously, I think my wife, wife looks great, but but I'm, I'm looking there and I was like, what was I eating in the run up stuff? Like, like this def, def, definitely doesn't look like me. Um, so I think yeah, I kind of got to be m- like mindful of it, but I'm not I'm not restrictive at all um, with, with what I eat. As I was saying like earlier, I'm quite keen to like experiment with different things. So um, like moving away from eating as much meat. Yeah. Or, you know. And uh, well, are you are you struggling with that, or is that something that uh, take you're taking in your stride and is quite comfortable? I I think I'm taking it in my stride. My wife thinks I'm really struggling with it. So, um, is, have you removed so, it completely? Minus today, apart from Five Guys today, <laughs> I, I've, I've I've tried to remove yeah meat. Well, yeah, yeah I'm not removing meat uh, altogether, but where I can, I'll, I'll pick a vegetarian option unless it's Five Guys. Um, and uh, but, but I found that I'm, I'm quite hungry. Yeah, I don't know whether that's because I'm not eating the right. And, and I'm, I'm sure like people like listening, and watching, will, be able, will point me in the right direction of like these are the things you need to eat. Um, but I don't know enough about plant-based diets or like vegetarianism and veganism because you said you were doing it just purely for an experiment yeah. yeah yeah i think that's quite good to 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 do i think people should experiment with yeah. different foods and, and, and see how it works and, and, and also i think your, your palate changes over time yeah. as well um and there is a there's a kind of i do i, I always eat after after crossfit you should so people, you, yeah. yeah except if you're the 7 30 class you get home and you're like it's 8 45 9 yeah you're you, quite late and i know yeah. you're not supposed to do that but well I, I disagree. I, oh, okay. I think you've yet, you've exercised. You're you're depleted. You should, in my opinion, you should refuel. You should okay. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, so yeah, I think, but it, it, you know, to a certain extent, it goes back to the kind of the lockdown stuff. I, I think I'm keen to just try different things and be quite open minded. And you know, if you said to me like three years ago, um, not that you're going to spend a few weeks not eating meat, I'd like never. No, no chance. Do um, you do you cook a lot of food? Do you cook? Uh, I can cook. I don't cook as much as I probably should. We actually get those kind of like boxes of- Oh, like that HelloFresh and stuff. Yeah, yeah. like that, that, that kind of that's quite, I found that I took that, um, went for a stage. I, I found them quite good. They are good, yeah. But I didn't find that there was enough meat in there for me. Yeah. Um, well, well, what's good, we, we do gusto and like you can choose like, so, so it's quite easy. We, we just, at the moment, we're just choosing plant-based. 
Um, so like last night we had like um, plant-based spaghetti bolognese. It was all right. It was like lots of lentils, maybe too many lentils. Um, and like we had macaroni and cheese, but without cheese the night before. It was quite, it's interesting. And, and you, you know, you're eating more lentils, more butternut squash. All that yeah. Kind of stuff. But I think it gives um, you different options for food. Cause obviously like, you know, generally they do say that in order to, well, to, to eat the same things over and over again, um, it's just consistent. You know, you're not, there's not a lot of variables that can go wrong. You know exactly what energy you're going to get, you know how you're going to feel, etc. Yeah. But I do think it's important to try new things and change up foods. And if like, whether it be a six week thing, a six month thing to give you a different taste for other foods. Cause otherwise you'll go through life never trying certain foods. Yeah. Oh, completely, completely. Um, yeah. And that's what I, when I, um, when I done the HelloFresh, uh, I found that I was just get, obviously you choose what yeah. you're having, but there's things in there, there's ingredients in there that you'd pro I, I can't even remember the name of some of these ingredients, but I would never ever, I've gone, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know where to look in a supermarket for them. No, yeah. But they send you that stuff and obviously you told how to cook it. And actually when you open to these things, the food comes out all right. And, and also if you were, if you were following a recipe and it said like, you've got to put a pinch of nutmeg in or something, yeah. then you'd probably go down to the supermarket and buy like a, Thing of nutmeg, whereas if but it you, actually gives you, yeah, yeah, there's no waste, waste. There's, no, there's, there's, there's very little waste. Um, so we quite like, we quite like that side of it. Um, but it, on the nutrition side, I think, thinking about gymnastics, looking at the so rig, it, rig ahead of us, um, I quite like to lose, I quite like to lose a bit of weight just to be able to access some movements. But I, I think having some mass or some weight can be good for certain things, and yeah, yeah. there's certainly some areas there's a very fine line, weight. yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're swinging from the bar, you're like, oh, I wish it wasn't this heavy. <laughs> Very fine. Yeah. Um, and Charles, what are your, uh, like, what would you, you got any personal, got start, not fitness yet, personal goals that you're looking to achieve in the next few, six to 12 months? Um, good question. Um, not really, we're moving house this weekend. So okay. um, so just like get settled in and, and um, yeah, just, just, just try and be like really good dad, good husband, um, just, yeah, and be a bit more, I think be a bit more selfish with my own time. That sounds, that doesn't sound like a very admirable goal, but like, Try not to, I don't know. Try try not to just be, all, all, you know, everywhere. Be everywhere all, all times. Actually, think oh, I'm going to have quality time with the family or with a certain group of friends, or even just by yourself. Or by yourself, yeah. right? Um, so, so I think, yeah, the, the, I don't really have any in terms of like career aspirations. I've, I've changed jobs quite a few times in the last few years, and I'm happy where I am now. And just focus on, you know, doubling down on that and, and, yeah. and consolidating. And then what about your fitness goals over the next six, 12 months? I know you just briefly discussed one um, yeah. about gymnastics. Uh, gymnastics, um, yeah, yeah. But what, yeah, is there any, um, <laughs> anything? I don't, I don't know. It's, uh, in some ways I was quite, I was lucky with when I started CrossFit and unlucky. I was lucky because I, I found something I really, really enjoyed. Uh, and then I had something I could do during lockdown with, with the Zoom stuff. Um, but I was unlucky because I'd done it for like eight, nine months, really enjoying it. And then it went into a lockdown. So I, I felt like I plateaued a bit, but, um, Thing I've always liked with CrossFit is you might have like three or four sessions on on the trot where you're feeling like you're not doing that well, but then something will click. Whether it's yeah. like your clean just improves or you're getting a few more like I don't know um, toast to bar or whatever. You know that's amazing. I want to come back for more. Um, I would quite like to do something competitive. Like I'm, I'm yeah. quite keen on that. Um, I don't I don't think I I don't think it'd be a particularly uh, uh, it, it, I wouldn't be very competitive in the competition, but I think it would be something good to aim for. Um, I think it's a very good goal for people looking to have a new challenge, uh, short term challenge to see how they would respond in that environment or, or see what their potential capabilities are. Um, they are good environments to be in. I think they are, the guy's ears perked up when uh, you said. Yeah, yeah, I saw the case <laughs> the other day, yeah. Um, um, it's definitely a lot of fun. And you'll see, like, just, just with the, like going back to one of your first questions about like why CrossFit, like the, um, being in a group, you push yourself so much harder. Yeah. Like when you think back to like going to the gym, you're, you're so in your comfort zone and you can be outside your comfort zone and you can push yourself. But I think, you know, if you were then in a competition, you're pushing yourself that much further. Whereas you can hide a little bit in a class or you can just go at like 80, 85%, you know, in a competition, especially if you're with other people in the team, you can't yeah. let them down. I tend to, in my experience, I tend to find that when you do do those days, whether it be in like a local thing or when the cross open comes about, comes around is, you just find this surge of like energy from somewhere yeah. and like whether it's just the adrenaline rush and you just you just do things that you hadn't done before whether it be like you've added 10 to 15 kilo on a certain one rep max or you're able to do something you just you, you just find it in you just to keep going i remember yeah. some of the stuff that i've done in the past like the feeling that you get 
whilst you're doing it, you're like, I don't think I can do this, but you're just powering through it. And yeah, then at yeah. the end, you're like, fuck, I actually done it. Yeah, and it's, yeah. su- it's such a, a, like a personal achievement. It's yeah, so good. Yeah. It is very good. And also I think you kind of, um, we're, we're similar age and I don't, we're, neither of us are old, but, but I think we're, <laughs> but like, like it is, it's a bit of a young man or young woman's yeah, yeah. CrossFit. And, and I think, you know, Wait, can I, I mean, that's what it's perceived to be, but. Yeah, I suppose, yeah, like, like the master stuff. Yes, yeah, it's cool. And, age group, and, yeah. Um, but, but I'm kind of like, you know, if I, if I want to enjoy it and, and do the best I can, like I've got to, like you do it, do it now or, you know. <laughs> yeah, never, right? not, so, yeah. yeah. Like, it will only be tougher. As, as, to, yeah, as, yeah, exactly. yeah. Obviously the intensity levels change, but in terms of like having that competition side, yeah, um, yeah. I would definitely say like the older you get on that side, the harder it would be. Yeah, um, yeah. Cause some of the guys that are doing it now are like, this, like the, this obviously the games have started now they're like 17 and they're the weight that they're pulling over their heads or pushing I mean, it's yeah. it's ridiculous yeah but that wasn't even an option like i didn't even i didn't know that crossfit was a thing like, really until i don't know i guess four or five years ago i started hearing about crossfit and you know i guess the crossfit games made quite a big difference to that people started watching that yeah TV. that was a massive thing when generally when people come in for the doors and we start to talk to them it is that they've heard of it either through social media or they watch something on on yeah. netflix but even if that was if that was the only thing thing you saw, and and perhaps you weren't that confident, it wouldn't necessarily mean no no no. You go to your first class. You're like, yeah. Well, that's that's yeah yeah. Quite yeah. There there is a, and and I want obviously because there are people listening to this. So I, I want to make a massive uh, well say that there is a massive difference between CrossFit is what happens between four walls of most CrossFit gyms, um, and CrossFit competition like the stuff that's going on at the games. That is competition. Yeah. That is a full time job for a lot of those guys. Yeah. Um, the fitness that happens inside the four walls is generally like us day-to-day people. They're just looking to stay stay fit yeah, and healthy. Yeah. Um, and often people will see the competition side and go, oh, I, I can't do that or I want to try it yeah. or get you know, as close. Um, so it's very interesting to when we get people come through the door to see yeah. which side of the fence, whether it's fitness side or, or competition I think there's, side. there's also a difference between here and, and some CrossFit boxes like internationally as well or, or even nationally where like, you know, it is, it is really supportive here. And yeah. whatever level you come in at, like, you know, it's, it, it's fine and great. Yeah, 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 yeah. You and, and yeah, people absolutely. celebrate your goals. Whereas, you know, that's- Yeah. That's um, nice. Charles, we've run out of time for today. Um, I have to cut us there. So sorry. Um, thank you so much. That's been great. Thanks um, for having me. And join us next week for another episode.